Welcome to the screencast in chapter 11. In this first screencast, we're going to focus on just DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and its structure. So probably the first thing to note about DNA is to know where it's located. And virtually all DNA, the DNA that we're going to talk about, is located in the nucleus. It's in the nucleus of every single cell of a living organism. Um, there, are, there are some remnants of, of DNA found outside the cell. That's really not going to be, or sorry, outside of the nucleus, but that's not really going to be um, a part of this conversation. DNA is found in the nucleus. Um, this, this slide here is a pretty important one to understand the structure or the relationship um, of DNA to the structures that are actually found in the nucleus of the cells. So DNA when it's all wound up and coiled up, forms a structure that's called a chromosome. And the chromosomes are what are found in the nucleus, in the nucleus of a cell. If you remember this from a while ago, um, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It is in the class of nucleic acids. It kind of tells you what type of molecule that it is. Um, its acidity is a little beyond our scope, but it is found in the nucleus. And deoxyribose is a sugar that is a part of this molecule and it's something we'll we'll talk about down the road the thing that's so amazing about DNA and its importance is that as I already stated it is found in the nucleus of every single cell of every living organism we have yet to find any um, any examples or any contradictions to that point so whether you're a fish or a human being, or a bacterium, or a fungus, or a plant, all living cells have the same instructions from this DNA molecule. So to start off talking about the structure itself, first of all the molecule, a couple different pictures of, of what a molecule could look like. A DNA molecule has the structure of what's called a double helix, meaning it's two-sided and has a helical shape to it which just means it looks like a twisted ladder. So these two guys, Watson and Crick, they're the ones that are given the credit for finding out this structure. And as we learn more about DNA, we'll know how important the DNA structure is. The DNA molecule has to be able to do three things. It has to be able to store information. It has to be able to transfer information, meaning to the next generation. And it also needs to be able to be expressed as a characteristic in a living thing. So these two, these two gentlemen right here, Watson and Crick, besides being noted for having a impeccable fashion taste, they also, they also, in 1953, relatively a short time ago, in a one-page scientific paper, changed the world, changed the genetic world and, and life sciences and biology forever. It should be noted that these guys also, like... Well, they did good science, and like so many other discoveries, they used information from other scientists that they collaborated with. And actually, science is a very competitive field in the world, whether it's competing for notoriety or even for monetary gain. Uh, these two, along with a woman named Rosalind Franklin um, and, some other, and some other scientists, these two are the ones that have the credit for discovering the structure of the DNA molecule. A little more history about the power of knowing the structure of DNA. Um, a number of years ago now, um, this Human Genome Project was quite a big deal. And what, what the Human Genome Project was an international project to what's called MAP, but basically to list all of the individual points of the human genome. In other words, the entire genetic makeup of a human being was to be mapped out and to know the sequences of the, of the chemicals in the molecules and to know um, and identify every single gene in the human body. A DNA molecule is made up of these tiny subunits. The subunits are called nucleotides, and there's three different parts of a nucleotide. A phosphate a specific sugar called deoxyribose, and then a nitrogenous base, which we just say base usually, 
a sugar, a phosphate, and a base. And the base can be different. There's four different types of bases that we'll get to in a second. But this is what, this is what makes up a nucleotide. A phosphate, the sugar, called deoxyribose, where the DNA structure gets its name, and a base. As we build on the structure of the DNA molecule, the backbone, or the sides of a ladder, are alternating sugars and phosphates. Sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate make up the sides of the ladder. So as we were just saying, the sugar and the phosphate group alternating make up the sides of the ladder, while the bases, the nitrogenous bases, would make up the rungs of the ladder. And because there are four different types of nitrogenous bases, there are four different types of nucleotides. Now again, the phosphate and the sugar are the same in any nucleotide, but there's four different types of bases. Since we said that the bases actually make up the rungs of the ladder, one side of the ladder matches up in a specific way with the other side of the ladder. And these specific base pairing rules, is what we'll refer to them as, um, they show what's called complementary. In other words, A and T, for adenine and thymine, they always form a base pair. Likewise, cytosine and guanine, the C and the G, always go together. They always form a base pair. So as you can see by this drawing of a DNA molecule, you can see that it's a twisted ladder. The sides of the ladder that look like a ribbon right here would be our alternating sugar and phosphate. And then the rungs of the ladder are complementary base pairs. Complementary base pairing. One side determines the other side. So given one side of a DNA molecule, you should be able to match it up. A and T always go together. C and G always go together. Now this is just a cartoon drawing. These things look like puzzle pieces. And they actually do have a molecular shape that means they can only fit together one way. So people or students often like to ask, yeah, but what if, but what if there was a different way of pairing? What if there was a different way of pairing? Well, there can't be. There can't be a different way because it's just like a key that doesn't fit in a lock. These won't fit together. So save yourself the trouble and just know that A and T always go together and C and G always go together. Any way you look at it, any drawing, any detailed drawing, model, or anything else, you will see that the A's and the T's always are complementary to one another. They always match up to one another. So what do you know? What do we know now from the structure of DNA and from the screencast? A screencast that, remember, you can go back and you can refer to again and replay and review all the time. But you should be able to do these simple or answer these simple questions. You should be able to answer these questions and describe the structure of DNA.